the Lion of Sodor. It was a beautiful day on the island of Sodor. The sky was blue and the sun was shining brightly. Thomas was chuffing cheerfully to Brendam Docks. He felt very happy. Thomas had to collect a special special, but he didn't know what it was. Hello, Cranky. Is my special ready? Yes, it is. The mayor is waiting for it at Knapford. You must puff very carefully. Thomas was puzzled. What is it, Cranky? It's the Lion of Sodor. Cinders and ashes, how exciting. I promise to take extra special care of it. I've never carried a real live lion before. When Cranky heard this, he was surprised. No, Thomas, the Lion of Sodor isn't up. But Thomas was too excited to listen to Cranky. He was already puffing proudly out of the docks. Thomas huffed happily along. Then he met Henry. Hello, Thomas. You look happy. What's your special? It's a lion. Bust my buffers. That's exciting. I only have sticky syrup to deliver. Suddenly, an idea flew into Thomas's funnel. I promised to take extra special care of my lion. I think he might really like sticky syrup. Could I have some for him, Henry? Of course. Thomas's driver poured some sticky syrup into the lion's crate. Thank you, Henry. I have to hurry now. The mayor is waiting for the Lion of Sodor. Henry was surprised. Fizzling fireboxes. Thomas has made a mistake. Oh, stop, Thomas. Uh, the Lion of Sodor isn't a... But Thomas didn't stop, and he didn't listen. Next, Thomas met Edward. Hello, Thomas. You look happy. What's your special? It's a lion. Flat my funnel. How exciting. I only have to deliver fresh fish. I think my lion would really like fresh fish. May I have some for him, Edward? Of course. So Thomas's driver put some fresh fish into the lion's crate. Thank you, Edward. I must hurry now. The mayor is waiting for the Lion of Sodor. Edward was surprised. <gasps> Clattering carriages. Stop, Thomas. The Lion of Sodor isn't a... But Thomas didn't stop, and he didn't listen. Then Thomas saw Toby. Hello, Thomas. You look happy. What's your special? It's a lion. Buff my boiler. How exciting. I only have straw in my trucks. I'm sure my lion would really like some soft straw to lie on. May I have some for him, Toby? Of course. Thomas's driver put some soft straw into the lion's crate. Thank you, Toby. I really have to hurry. The mayor will be waiting for the Lion of Sodor. Toby was surprised. Oh, no. Trembling trucks. Stop, Thomas. The Lion of Sodor is never... But Thomas didn't stop and he didn't listen. Thomas's pistons pumped and his wheels whirred. He couldn't wait to deliver his lion. He chuffed his hardest and raced on towards Knapford Station. At last, Thomas puffed proudly into Knapford. The fat controller was there, and so were the other engines. I'm very excited, Thomas. This is a big day. The Lion of Sodor is here. Thomas was uncoupled from the flatbed, and he pulled away to join the other engines. The workman carefully opened the lion's crate. Then the engines gasped. The Lion of Sodor wasn't a real lion at all. It was a statue. And now it was covered in sticky syrup, fresh fish and straw. The fat controller was cross. Thomas, 
This is a terrible mess. Gordon and James <laughs> laughed. <laughs> Thomas felt very silly. I'm sorry. I thought I had a real lion in my crate. I wanted to take extra special care of it. I didn't know the line of Sodor was a statue. So the fat controller told Thomas all about the Lion of Sodor, and the other engines listened carefully. So you see, Thomas, it was the most famous statue on Sodor. Then it broke. This is the shiny new statue we have been waiting for. The mayor is coming at tea time. And now look at it. I'll make sure it's clean, sir. I promise. The Lion of Sodor will be shiny and new again in no time. Very well, Thomas. Thomas still felt very silly. Cheer up, Thomas. I didn't know the Lion of Sodor was a statue either. It all happened a long, long time ago. Not many engines remember that time. We tried to tell you, but you didn't stop. I'm sorry, Henry. I should have listened. Now I must hurry. I must get the Lion of Sodor cleaned right away. Why don't you take it to the washdown? This time, Thomas listened. What a good idea. Thank you, Henry. Thomas was coupled to the flatbed, and he chuffed quickly away. Thomas took the Lion of Sodor to the washdown. Soon, the sticky mess was washed off. That looks much better, Thomas. But the statue isn't shiny. Take it to the steamworks, Thomas. They'll polish it until it sparkles and shines. This time, Thomas listened. Thank you, Edward. That's a very good idea. Victor will know just what to do. And Thomas puffed quickly away. Thomas took the Lion of Sodor to the steamworks. Workmen polished the statue until it shone and sparkled, just as Edward had said. The Lion of Sodor looks much better now, Thomas. But it's nearly tea time. The mail will soon be at Knapford, and it's a long way. Take the track by the windmill. That'll get you there in time. This time, Thomas listened. Thank you, Toby. That's a good idea. So Thomas took the shortcut past the windmill. He huffed and puffed as fast as his pistons could pump towards Knapford. Children cheered and passengers waved as Thomas chuffed by. Everyone wanted to see the Lion of Sodor. And everyone wanted Thomas to stop. I can't stop now. I mustn't be late. The mail will be at Knapford and he won't wait. And Thomas whooshed on his way. Thomas puffed proudly into Knapford Station. The mayor had just arrived. He was delighted to see the new Lion of Sodor. The statue shone and sparkled in the sun. Well done, Thomas. This is the finest statue I've ever seen. And the cleanest. <laughs> Everyone cheered, and Thomas smiled from footplate to fender. Double trouble. All the engines were very excited. They chuffed cheerfully and chattered as they clattered along the tracks. Today was the Fat Controller's birthday, and there was to be the grandest birthday party on Sodor. Thomas had a very special special. He was to pick up the Fat Controller and Lady Hat for the party. As Thomas approached Maithwaite Station, he gasped. Ahead, he could see the Fat Controller already on the platform. Cinders and ashes, I must be late. Thomas pulled into the station. He was worried. I'm sorry, sir. I thought I was early. The Fat Controller turned around. Thomas gasped. <gasps> the Fat Controller had a moustache. Thomas was so surprised he nearly popped a piston. Thomas, my good friend, you're looking perfectly polished today. <laughs> Thank you, sir. The Fat Controller <laughs> chuckled so loudly his top hat wobbled. Thomas was puzzled. The Fat Controller never chuckled so loudly that his top hat wobbled. 
And the fat controller never called Thomas his good friend. I know, Thomas. Let's go to the Whispering Woods. It's one of my favourite spots. We have plenty of time before the party. All aboard! Now Thomas was even more puzzled. He wanted to ask about the Fat Controller's new moustache and why he was acting so strangely. But Thomas didn't want to look silly, so he decided not to ask. Thomas pulled away from Maithwaite Station and chuffed towards the Whispering Woods. Thomas puffed up to the Whispering Woods. Edward was there. Edward had brought children to visit the woods. Then he was to take them to the party. Hello, Edward. Hello, Thomas. You look worried. Thomas was worried, but before he could explain, the fat controller climbed down. Marvellous! What fun! Please, sir. We can't stay long. The children mustn't be late for the party. Oh, party smarty, Thomas. We have plenty of time. You worry too much. And the fat controller strode off. Hello, children. Who'd like a game of hide and seek? Did the Fat Controller say a game of hide-and-seek? Yes, he did. And Thomas's wheels wobbled with worry. The Fat Controller played hide-and-seek for a long time. He was very happy. So were the children. Edward was puzzled. The Fat Controller never plays hide-and-seek. I know. And what's that on his face? A moustache. It just appeared. Today, the Fat Controller doesn't seem like the Fat Controller at all. Just then, the Fat Controller came back. Thomas wanted to ask him if he was feeling all right, but he didn't want to look silly. Thomas knew that silly engines weren't really useful engines, so he didn't ask any questions. We must hurry now, sir. We'll be late. And so will the children. But the Fat Controller wasn't worried. Don't hurry the children, Edward. Let them play. Edward was so surprised his boiler bubbled. Then the Fat Controller jumped aboard Annie and waved to all the children. Thomas's wheels clickety-clacked. He puffed and he huffed along the track. He knew they were late for the party. Thomas stopped at the junction. Suddenly, the Fat Controller jumped out of Annie and climbed up to the signal box. I won't be a moment, Thomas. Thomas was amazed. So was the signal man. The Fat Controller never came into his signal box. Hello there. May I have a turn? Thomas looked up. He saw the Fat Controller pull a lever. Then Thomas heard Gordon's whistle. Cinders and ashes. Here comes Gordon. Gordon had all the important visitors aboard the express. He was taking them to the party. With a clang and a clatter, the points changed. Gordon and the express were no longer on the express track. They were now on a branch line heading away from the party. Thomas heard the Fat Controller whoop for joy. Hurrah! Fizzling fireboxes. I must ask the Fat Controller why he's being so strange. But when the Fat Controller came down from the signal box, Thomas didn't say anything. He still didn't want to look silly. What fun! All aboard, Thomas! Thomas raced towards Maithwaite. Lady Hat would be waiting. They were very late. Thomas was worried. First, the Fat Controller had a moustache. Next, he wanted to play hide-and-seek with the children. Then he sent Gordon off the express line and away from the party. The Fat Controller is acting very strangely indeed. Thomas puffed into Maithwaite. The station master was cross. Thomas, you are late. The Fat Controller and Lady Hat had to go to the party and Bertie the bus. But Bertie hasn't arrived at the party. Neither have the children or the very important visitors. Thomas was puzzled. If the Fat Controller is on Bertie, then who is on board Annie? Just then, Thomas's passenger stepped down. Thomas knew he had to ask the question he hadn't asked before, even if he looked silly. Excuse me, Fat Controller. You don't quite seem yourself today. Is everything all right? Thomas's passenger beamed brightly. Yes, Thomas, but I'm not the Fat Controller. I'm Stalloam Hat. 
I'm his brother! Thomas was amazed. That explained everything. But he wished now he had asked his question earlier. Now there was no time to waste if he wanted to be a really useful engine. But he must have broken down. We must find him right away. The Fat Controller's brother was very excited. Hurrah! Another game of hide-and-seek! Now Thomas was stern. No, Sir Loam Hat. I have to work hard and quickly, otherwise your brother's party will be spoiled. Sir Loam boarded Annie and Thomas puffed away. Thomas found Bertie the bus. Smoke billowed from his engine. Bertie looked very unhappy. So did the fat controller and Lady Hat. Thomas! Where have you been? Just then, the Fat Controller's brother stepped down from Annie. The Fat Controller sighed. Oh, no, Loam. Have you been up to your old tricks again? Absolutely right, Topham. I've been having a wonderful time with Thomas. The Fat Controller didn't think this was funny at all. Loam, you have caused confusion and delay. We must hurry. Thomas delivered the Fat Controller, his brother and Lady Hat to the party, just in time. The party looked grand, but Thomas couldn't stay. He had work to do. First, Thomas chuffed to the Whispering Woods. Edward was very happy to see Thomas. Go straight to the party with the children, Edward. The Fat Controller is waiting. It was his brother, Sir Loam, who was playing hide-and-seek. Next, Thomas found Gordon. Gordon was huffing and puffing as slowly as a snail down a rickety branch line. Oh, the indignity. Hurry, Gordon, to the next express line. Race like a rocket to the party. That made Gordon very happy. At last, Thomas chuffed back to the party. Edward and Gordon were already there. What a wonderful party! And it was. Everyone was laughing. Then Thomas and his friends heard something very extraordinary. The Fat Controller chuckled <laughs> even louder than his brother. And that made Thomas happiest of all. The Early Bird. On the island of Sodor, all of the engines on the Fat Controller's railway are busy. Gordon pulls the express. Percy delivers the mail. And Thomas puffs and chuffs cheerfully on his branch line. One morning, Thomas's fireman fanned his firebox ready for work. Thomas saw that his best friend Percy wasn't there. Good morning, James. Have you seen Percy? No, I have too much to do to see Percy. Then the Fat Controller arrived. Thomas, Percy has popped a piston. He has to go to the steamworks to be fixed. Percy won't be able to deliver the mail tomorrow morning. You must do it for him. Thomas was excited. He had never delivered the mail before. He tooted his whistle loudly. Yes, sir. I've always wanted to deliver the mail. Make sure you do a good job, Thomas. Of course I will, sir. Don't worry, sir. Then Thomas puffed proudly away to his branch line. Thomas stopped at a crossing. Gordon was there. Percy is being fixed. Tomorrow, I'm going to deliver the mail run for him. Percy's mail run? Have you asked Percy how to do it? Don't worry, Gordon. I know all about delivering the mail. Hmm. Do you indeed? Then the gate opened and Thomas puffed quickly away. Thomas worked hard all day. That night, he went to see Percy at the steamworks. Percy didn't look happy. Is your piston fixed, Percy? No, it's still broken. Don't worry. I'm going to do your mail run tomorrow. Thank you, Thomas. Shall I tell you what to do? I know what to do, Percy. Now, I have to go to sleep. I shall be up very early. Well, 
If you're sure, Thomas. Very sure, Percy. I have to go back to Tidmouth now. I need lots of sleep. Goodbye. Percy watched as Thomas chuffed away. The next morning, Thomas woke up very early. He felt very proud to be pulling the mail trucks. There wasn't a peep to be heard as Thomas chuffed across the island. Everyone was fast asleep. First, Thomas puffed to the quarry. I must let the quarry manager know that the mail is here. Thomas was excited. He blew his whistle very loudly. And then he chuffed cheerfully away. Thomas hadn't seen that his loud whistle had woken up Mavis. <sighs> Who's making that noise? Next, Thomas chuffed to the docks. I must let the dock manager know that the mail is here. Thomas was excited. He blew his whistle even louder. And then he chuffed cheerfully away. What Thomas hadn't seen was that his good morning whistle had woken Cranky up. Ugh, who woke me up? This is fun! Lastly, Thomas steamed into the steamworks. I must let the steamworks manager know that the mail is here. Thomas was so excited, he blew his whistle louder than ever. Oh. Whoa, whoa. And then he huffed happily away. What Thomas hadn't seen was that he had woken Victor and Kevin up. Oh, what's that noise, boss? Oh, who knows, Kevin? Who knows? Some early bird. Thomas worked hard all morning. Everywhere Thomas went, he blew his whistle loudly. Delivering the mail is fun! Soon Thomas had delivered all the mail. It was time for him to puff back to Tidmouth Sheds for a rest. As Thomas passed through the quarry, he saw Mavis. Her trucks were being loaded with slate. Then there was trouble. Mavis hadn't lined up her trucks under the hopper. Slate spilled everywhere. That's strange. Mavis never makes mistakes. What Thomas didn't see was that Mavis was fast asleep under the hopper. That's why she had put the trucks in the wrong place. Next, Thomas passed through the docks. Cranky was unloading some big crates from a ship. Then there was trouble. Cranky dropped the crates. They fell to the ground with a smash and a crash. That's strange. Cranky never makes mistakes. What Thomas didn't see was that Cranky had fallen fast asleep. That's why he had dropped the crates. Thomas pulled into Tidmouth Shed. He wanted to tell Percy all about the mail delivery. But Percy wasn't there. The fat controller was there. He was cross. Someone woke Mavis up too early by tooting too loudly on their whistle. Then someone woke up Cranky at the docks and Victor at the steamworks. Now they have all made silly mistakes. Thomas knew he had woken everyone up with his cheerful whistle. He felt terrible. I'm very sorry, sir. It was me. Then, Thomas, as Percy is still not fixed, you must do a better job tomorrow. I will, sir. I promise, sir. Then, Gordon arrived. He had heard all about Thomas's trouble with the mail run. You were right, Gordon. Delivering the mail is a hard job. I should have asked Percy what to do. And this time, I will. That evening, Thomas visited Percy at the steamworks. He asked him all about delivering the mail. 
and Percy told him all about being quiet. The next morning, Thomas set off early, pulling the mail truck. He stopped at the quarry. This time, he didn't blow his whistle. He puffed very quietly so that he didn't wake Mavis. Next, Thomas stopped at the docks. He didn't blow his whistle here either. And he didn't wake Cranky up. Lastly, Thomas puffed into the steamworks. He dropped off the mail and he didn't blow his whistle once. Victor stayed fast asleep. But Percy had woken up early to see his best friend Thomas. Well done, Thomas. You did everything right. Thank you, Percy. Now I know the most important thing about delivering the mail. You have to do it quietly. Percy was so happy for his friend that he wanted to toot out loud. Then he looked at Thomas. Thomas had fallen fast asleep. Sleep well, Thomas. And Thomas snored the sleep of an engine who had done a very good job. Thomas and the pigs. There are lots and lots of farms on the island of Sodor. There are farms with sheep. There are farms with cows. There are farms with goats. Thomas likes visiting all the farms. But his favorite farm of all was Farmer Trotter's pig farm. Thomas liked their curly tails and the funny noises they made. Thomas liked to visit Farmer Trotter's pig farm as often as he could. One day, Thomas was watching the pigs roll in the mud. Farmer Trotter was happy to see Thomas. Hello, Farmer Trotter. Hello, Thomas. I have some very special news. One of my pigs is going to have piglets today. Thomas was excited. I can't wait to see them. I need some soft straw for the piglets. I'd like you to go to Farmer McCall's right now to collect it. He'll be waiting for you. Thomas was happy to help. Yes, Farmer Trotter. So Thomas chuffed cheerfully away with his empty flatbed. On his way to Farmer McCall's, Thomas thought about the pigs. I'm sure the piglets will like the soft straw. I wonder if there's anything else they'd like. Thomas puffed up to the dairy. He saw Percy. Thomas told Percy all about the piglets. How exciting! I wish I could see them, but I have to deliver this milk. Thomas looked at the milk churns. An idea flew into his funnel. I'm sure the piglets would like some milk. May I have some? Of course you can, Thomas. So the milk churns were loaded onto Thomas's flatbed. Thank you, Percy. I must go. Farmer McCall is waiting for me. And he steamed away. Thomas felt pleased. I wonder what else the piglets might like. Then, Thomas saw James. James was at an orchard. The trees were full of juicy red apples. Hello, James. Hello, Thomas. Thomas told James all about the piglets. The piglets will soon be born. I must collect some soft straw for them. I wish I could see the piglets, but I have to deliver these boxes of apples to the village. Thomas looked at the juicy red apples. I'm sure the piglets would like some juicy red apples. May I have some? Of course you can. So Thomas's flatbed was loaded with lots and lots of juicy red apples. Thank you, James. I must go. 
Farmer McCall is waiting for me. Thomas chuffed quickly away. He felt very pleased. I wonder what else the piglets might like. Then Thomas saw some children. They were collecting shiny brown chestnuts. Hello. Thomas told the children all about the piglets. They were very excited. I'm sure the piglets would like some shiny brown chestnuts to eat. Please, may I have some for them? The children were delighted to give Thomas some of their shiny brown chestnuts. Thank you. I must go. Farmer McCall is waiting for me. And Thomas puffed away. He felt even more pleased. At last, Thomas chuffed to Farmer McCall's farm. Farmer McCall was waiting. He was cross. Thomas, you're late. Where have you been? I'm sorry, Farmer McCall. I stopped to collect some milk, some juicy red apples and some shiny brown chestnuts for the piglets. Farmer McCall looked at Thomas's flatbed. He saw the milk, the juicy red apples and shiny brown chestnuts. Your flatbed is full. You have no room for straw now. Fizzling fireboxes. I didn't think about that. I hope the piglets will like the milk, the apples and the chestnuts just as much as straw. I must puff straight back to Farmer Trotters. The piglets will be born soon. So Thomas pumped his pistons and chuffed quickly away. Thomas pulled up at the farm. Farmer Trotter was waiting. He looked at Thomas's full flatbed. He was surprised. Thomas, where's the soft straw? I thought the piglets would like these things just as much as straw. No, Thomas. Piglets need soft straw and they're about to be born. Thomas felt very silly. I'm sorry. I'll empty my flatbed, then I'll puff back to Farmer McColl's as fast as I can. I must get the straw. There can be no delay. The piglets will need it by the end of the day. Thomas saw Percy at the water tower. Thomas, I know something else the piglets would like. I'm sorry, Percy. I can't stop. Bye, Thomas. I must get the straw. There can be no delay. I've no time for chatter along the way. Next, Thomas saw James at a junction. Hello, Thomas. I've been thinking about the piglets. I'm sure they'd like... I'm sorry, James. I can't stop. I must get the straw. There can be no delay. I've no time for chatter along the way. Thomas whooshed and he wheeshed. He huffed and he puffed until he arrived at Farmer McCall's farm. It was late. Hello, Farmer McCall. Now I have plenty of room for the soft straw for the piglets. Could you load it right now? Of course I can, Thomas. <laughs> Thank you, Farmer McCall. I must hurry. Thomas's pistons pumped and his axles ached. I must puff fast. There's no time for delay. The piglets need straw by the end of the day. At last, Thomas arrived at Farmer Trotter's pig farm. It was now nearly night time. Thomas saw that the pigs had gone. Cinders and ashes. I'm too late. You're just in time, Thomas. I need that soft straw right away. Farmer Trotter unloaded the straw from Thomas's flatbed and he took it away to make a nice soft bed for the piglets. The piglets have just been born. Thomas was delighted. Bubbling boilers. Look how small they are and how sweet. Thomas could see the piglets really like the soft straw. Ah, oh, that little piglet is looking at me. I think I'll call him Thomas. 
Thomas was so happy his axles tingled and his boiler bubbled. Toby's new whistle. It was a bright sunny day on the island of Sodor. All the engines chuffed cheerfully. Everyone was smiling. Everyone except Toby. Toby was at the steamworks. Toby's bell had stopped working. It was covered in rust and didn't clang and chime anymore. It had to stay in the steamworks to be cleaned. So Toby was very sad. Victor didn't have another bell for Toby, so he had to be fitted with a new steam whistle. Easy does it, Kevin, my friend. Left a little, no, right a little. Perfect. Very good, my friend. How does that feel, Toby? Toby thought the new whistle felt very strange. It was much bigger than his old bell. He was worried. I've never used a steam whistle before. James chuffed into the steamworks with the fat controller. Hello, Toby. That's a three-chime steam whistle. I used to have one of those. This made Toby even more worried. Is it a good whistle? It's the best. It's the loudest whistle in the whole of Sodor. The loudest? Yes. It's loud and booming. Everyone will hear you coming. Toby didn't like this. He didn't like loud and booming noises. He liked the ting-a-ling-a-ling -a -ling of his old bell. Toby, you must go to Knapford and collect Lady Hat. She's waiting, so don't be late. Yes, sir. So Toby chuffed off to Knapford Station with his new three-chime steam whistle. I wish I had my old bell back. I don't know how to use this new loud and booming three-chime steam whistle. Then an idea flew into Toby's funnel. If I puff slowly and carefully, I won't need to use my whistle at all. I can do all my jobs and wait for my old bell to be fixed. This made Toby feel much happier. Toby steamed slowly through Sodor. Gordon huffed and puffed impatiently behind him. Out of my way, Toby, you old steam tram. You're making me late. Later, some cows were on the tracks in front of Toby. He couldn't puff past them. Go away, cows, please. I need to chuff through. But the cows didn't take any notice of Toby. They didn't move. They were too busy mooing and chewing. Toby knew what he needed to do. He needed to blow his new steam whistle. But Toby was scared. I don't want to use this new three-chime steam whistle. I wish I had my little bell back. Then another idea flew into Toby's funnel. I know what I can do. I'll get help. So Toby reversed down the track to find help. Some farm workers were working in the field. Excuse me. Hello. Hello. The farm workers didn't hear Toby. Toby blew steam and rattled his rods. But the farm workers still didn't hear Toby. They were too far away. Bust my buffers, they can't hear me. Toby knew he should use his new steam whistle, but he was still too scared. Oh, I wish I had my little bell back. So Toby puffed on. Somewhere he had to find help. But Toby couldn't find anybody to help him. So he huffed back to the cows. I do hope the cows have gone back to their field now. But the cows hadn't gone back to their field. They were still mooing and chewing all over the tracks. Oh, no! Toby tried to biff them with his cow catcher. But they still wouldn't move. Oh, no, Henrietta. I think we're trapped. <gasps> then there was trouble. 
Toby heard a noise that made his wheels wobble. Another engine is coming. They'll crash into the cows. The engine steamed round the corner. It was Thomas. Thomas was racing like the wind. His firebox was fuming and his boiler was burning brightly. I have to tell Thomas about the cows. I'll have to use this new whistle. Toby closed his eyes. His firebox flared and steam blew into his new three-chime steam whistle. It was the loudest whistle anyone had ever heard on Sodor. What was that? It was a three-chime steam whistle. They're the best whistles ever. I wonder who blew that? Thomas heard the three-chime steam whistle. Cinders and ashes, I must stop. He applied his brakes. Thomas screeched and skidded. Sparks flew and tracks trembled. Toby didn't dare look. Ew! Thank you, Toby. Your whistle told me there was trouble ahead. Toby felt very proud. I'm pleased I use my three-chime steam whistle. It was even louder than my bell. Thomas was proud of his friend Toby. Together with their whistles and wish, Toby and Thomas moved the cows from the track. Then, Toby remembered Lady Hat. Fizzling fireboxes. I've forgotten all about Lady Hat. She's waiting for me at Knapford. I must puff faster than Gordon to chuff there on time. Don't worry, Toby. I'll puff with you. We're sure to make it together. Thomas and Toby huffed and puffed towards Knapford Station. Suddenly, the fat controller arrived. He was very cross. Toby, Lady Hat waited for a very long time. Now Gordon is taking her home. Toby was upset. He knew he hadn't been a really useful engine. Oh, I'm sorry, sir. Then Toby stopped. He saw something ahead. There's a fallen tree across the tracks. And Gordon is steaming straight towards it. Oh, no! Don't worry, sir. I know just what to do. Toby bubbled his boiler and pumped his pistons. He blew his three-chime steam whistle as loudly and as boomingly as he could. Gordon heard Toby's whistle. He applied his brakes and screeched to a halt. Toby, did you blow that whistle so loudly? Yes, I did. It was my new three-chime steam whistle. For a steam tram, you have a lot of puff. Thank you. Well done, Toby. Toby couldn't have felt more proud. Good job, Toby. Toby was back at the steamworks. His little bell was ready. It glistened and gleamed as if it were brand new. Toby was happy. Bye-bye, big new steam whistle. Victor and Kevin had heard the news that Toby had saved Thomas and Gordon. Well, Toby, my friend, it sounds as if you had a very busy day. Did you like the new three-chance steam whistle? It was very useful. You can keep it if you like, my friend. No, thank you. My bell is the best of all. <laughs> splish, splash, splosh. It had been raining and pouring on the island of Sodor. The engines were splattered and sploshed with mud. Thomas liked the rain. It splish-splashed on his boiler and pitter-patted on his paintwork. Thomas and Rosie had biffed and bashed all day at the shunting yards. Now it was time to go. Come on, Rosie. I'll race you to Tidmouth Shed. The two friends puffed along the tracks, straight through a very big puddle. Whee! Thomas and Rosie were splashed from footplate to fender in muddy rainwater. <laughs> <laughs> that was fun! Then an idea flew into Thomas's funnel. Thomas reversed slowly. 
Then he pumped his pistons. Here I come, Rosie. Splish, splash, splash. <laughs> That's a good game. Here I come, Thomas. Splish, splash, splash. <laughs> 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 Muddy water splattered everywhere. Then the fat controller arrived. He had some important news. Alicia Botti is to sing at a concert in the town hall. The concert will be followed by a grand tea. That's exciting. What fun. Thomas, you must go straight to the washdown. Then you are to collect Miss Botti and myself from Dry All Station. We will be waiting for you. Yes, sir. Rosie, you must collect Annie and Clarabelle and take them to dry or for Thomas. Yes, sir. Right away, sir. See you later, Rosie. And Thomas and Rosie chuff quickly away. Thomas pulled up at the junction to the washdown. He saw a very big puddle on the other track. Charlie was waiting right by it. He was very muddy. Splashing Rosie was such good fun. I'm sure Charlie would like my game too. And I'm sure I have time for another puddle before the washdown. So Thomas didn't take the track to the washdown. He took the track through the middle of the very big puddle. Here I come, Charlie. Splish, splash, splash. <laughs> Bust my buffers. That's a good game. Thomas huffed happily on. Hooray! This is fun! Now Thomas wanted to find more puddles. He couldn't wait to play his game with the other engines. At the next junction, Thomas waited to chuff left to the washdown. Then he saw a very big puddle on the right track. Emily was waiting. Emily's muddy already. I'm sure she'd like my game. And I'm sure I have time for another puddle before the washdown. Here I come, Emily! Splish, splash, splash! <laughs> Muddy rainwater had splooshed all over Emily and all over Emily's flower trucks. Fizzling fireboxes. I have to take this flower to the bakery to make the cakes for Alicia Botti's tea. Now Thomas has ruined it. Thomas didn't know he had splashed Emily's flower trucks. This is fun! Splish, splash, splash! I'll soon need a wash! <laughs> and Thomas chuffed on, chuckling. At the next junction, Thomas waited to chuff to the washdown. Then he saw a very big puddle right beside James. James is muddy already. I'm sure he'd like my game, and I'm sure I have time for just one more puddle before the washdown. Here I come, James! Splish, splash, splash! And Thomas <laughs> steamed away laughing. Muddy rainwater had splooshed all over James and all over the ripe strawberries on his flatbed. Blistering boilers! These strawberries were for Alicia Botti's cakes. Now they're ruined! Thomas didn't know he had splashed James's strawberries. This is fun! Splish, splash, splash! I'll soon need a wash! And Thomas puffed on happily. Thomas chuffed up to the next junction. Now it was getting late. I know there'll be a very big puddle along the track by the river. I'm sure I have time for one last puddle before the washdown. So Thomas took the left track that went along the river. Ahead of him, there was a very big puddle. My! This is the biggest puddle ever! Here I come! Splish! Splash! Splash! Then there was trouble. Muddy water flew high into the air and splooshed down all over Alicia Botti and the Fat Controller. Thomas! Thomas screeched to a stop and reversed slowly. He saw that he had splish, splash, bloshed Alicia Botti and the Fat Controller. Cinders and ashes! 
Look what you've done to Miss Botty. She's soaked. Also, Thomas, I hear from the dairy manager that you ruined the flour and strawberries for Miss Botty's grand tea. This is a disaster. Thomas felt terrible. He tried to puff forward, but he couldn't. Oh, no. The big puddle had put out his firebox. This game isn't fun anymore. It's all gone wrong. Then Thomas heard Rosie's whistle. Rosie, please help me. I've splish splashed bloshed into trouble. Oh, dear, Thomas. Of course I will. Don't worry. Rosie heaved and huffed Thomas onto dry tracks. With my dry coal, Thomas, your boiler will soon be bubbling. Thank you, Rosie. Now I can't go to collect the fat controller and Alicia Botty. Would you take my special for me? Of course I will. I'll go right away. Later, Thomas was once more steaming happily. He pulled up at a junction. There was a very big puddle on the right track. Look at that big puddle. It's perfect for splish splash sploshing. No, I'm not going to splish splash splosh anymore. I must make sure that Alicia Botty's grand tea is on time. And Thomas puffed along the left track to the bakery and away from the big puddle. Thomas arrived just as James and Emily had delivered fresh strawberries and flour to the bakery. Your silly game means we'll be late for the concert. No, you won't. I'll wait here for the cakes, then I'll deliver them. You can go to the washdown, then you'll both be clean for the concert. Thank you, Thomas. Now I'll be shiny and best and gleam more than the rest. Thomas puffed in with the fresh strawberry cakes for the grand tea. You're just in time, Thomas. Thank you, sir. I'm sorry I caused confusion and delay. Rosie puffed up to Thomas. I found another puddle. It's perfect for our game. We can play again. No, thank you, Rosie. I think I've done enough splish splash sploshing for one day. Henry's Good Deeds There are lots of beautiful birds on the island of Sodor. The engines know their names and their songs. One day the engines were especially excited. A new bird had been seen on the island. The fat controller arrived at Tidmouth Sheds. He had important news. The Sodor Warbler has arrived back on the island. Very few people have ever seen this bird, so a lot of visitors will be coming to our island. You will all be very busy taking them to spot the bird. Remember your carriages at all times. And remember not to frighten the Warbler. Henry was worried for the Warbler. Do you think the Sodor Warbler will be scared of engines? No, Henry, not if you're really useful, and I need you to be really useful. Yes, sir. You must deliver a nesting pole to Bluff's Cove. Percy was puzzled. Um, what's a nesting pole? It's a tall pole with a shelf on top. Birds build their nests on it. Percy liked this idea. Do you understand, Henry? Yes, sir. I will deliver the pole straight away. Good. We hope the Sodor Warbler will make its home here once more. That's a very exciting special, Henry. Henry was happy. He puffed away proudly. Later, Henry clickety-clacked along the track. Ahead, he could see Thomas with Annie and Clarabelle. Thomas had stopped. That's strange. Henry chuffed slowly up to Thomas. Is anything wrong, Thomas? No, Henry. I'm letting Farmer McCall cross with his sheep. Henry could see the sheep tripping and tapping across the tracks. Thomas, you helped me. 
That's a good deed. Well done. You're welcome, Farmer McCall. Thomas chuffed away cheerfully. Henry puffed and puzzled. I would like to help someone. They will call it a good deed and they will say, Well done, Henry. This made Henry feel very happy. I'm sure I can deliver the nesting pole and do good deeds. So Henry huffed happily on. Soon, Henry saw Farmer Trotter's pink pigs. They were snuffling and sniffing sadly at the side of the track. Hmm, those pigs don't look very happy. Then, Henry saw that the pigs were looking at the muddy field on the other side of the tracks. I know what's wrong. Those pigs want to roll in the muddy field. If I stop here, those pigs can cross safely. They won't be scared anymore. So Henry stopped and the pigs tripped and trotted across the tracks. Soon, the pigs weren't pink anymore. They were brown, muddy and very happy. Farmer Trotter wasn't happy at all. I wanted pink pigs to take to the county fair. Henry was sorry. Oh dear, Farmer Trotter is cross. I didn't help at all. Suddenly an idea flew into Henry's funnel. I'll reverse back down the track. Then the pigs will have more room to cross. Henry pumped his pistons, his wheels whirred, he puffed steam and he chuffed backwards. This should help, Farmer Trotter. But it didn't help. The pigs were scared by Henry's steam and the wear of his wheels. They scattered and clattered into the apple crates. The apples rolled everywhere. This made the pigs very happy. They munched and scrunched the rosy red apples. But now they wouldn't move from the tracks. That made Farmer Trotter even more cross. Bust my buffers. My idea wasn't a good deed at all. Just then, Thomas puffed up on the down line. Annie and Clarabelle were full of visitors to see the Sodor Warbler. Cinders and ashes! How am I going to puff through? The Sodor Warbler has been spotted in the Fenland fields. I'm in a hurry. I'm sorry, Thomas. I was trying to help Farmer Trotter. I'm sure I can help you. I'll take your visitors to the Fenland fields. We'll be there in good time. Thomas thought this was a good idea. Thank you, Henry. The visitors were surprised. They stepped and scurried through the pigs to Henry's carriage. Henry felt pleased. I'm sure this is a good deed, and I'm sure I still have time to deliver the nesting pole. Henry puffed and huffed his hardest all the way to the Fenland fields. Here we are. Watch out for the warbler. The visitors were very excited. They opened the carriage doors carefully. They didn't want to scare the Sodor Warbler away. Henry felt very happy. At last, I've been helpful. I've done a good deed. Henry tooted a loud goodbye. Then there was trouble. A colorful bird flapped and flew from a tree high into the sky and away. It was the Sodor Warbler. The visitors moaned and groaned. Fizzling fireboxes. The bird was scared of my loud whistle. Henry steamed sadly away. I wanted to help the pigs. I wanted to help Farmer Trotter. I wanted to help the visitors. But I haven't helped anybody. I've done no good deeds. And I haven't delivered the nesting pole. Henry felt terrible. Henry huffed towards Bluff's Cove. He had to deliver the nesting pole. I don't think anyone is ever going to say, well done, Henry, to me. Henry waited at a junction. His wheels wobbled with worry. Now I'm sure I'll be late with the nesting pole. The fat controller will be cross with me. Oh dear, oh dear. Suddenly, a colourful bird flew from a tree. Henry was too sad to smile at the bird. 
the bird landed on Henry's buffer. At least I can give that bird a rest and a ride. So Henry and the beautiful bird chuffed on towards Bluff's Cove. Henry puffed to the halt. A lot of visitors were waiting. They were hoping to see the Sodor Warbler. I hope they'll be pleased that I have delivered the nesting pole. But the visitors weren't just pleased. They were amazed. They smiled and pointed and took out their cameras. Henry was surprised. Oh, the visitors seem very pleased to see me. I can't think why. After all, no one has said, well done, Henry. Well done, Henry. You have brought the soda warbler to us. Hooray for Henry. Henry blinked and blushed. The bird I carried on my buffer was the Sodor Warbler. Then Thomas arrived with more visitors. Well done, Henry. Henry was so proud, his firebox fizzed and his boiler bubbled. And this time I wasn't even trying to do a good deed. Soon the nesting pole was up. The Sodor Warbler looked snug and sleepy in its nest at the top. I think our friend likes its new home. Welcome home, Mr. Warbler. And well done, Henry. <laughs> <laughs>